Need a few more network ports? No room for another power supply to plug in? Want a managed switch without the price? Stay tuned and I'll give you a solution that will do exactly that. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using the Ubiquiti Flex Mini Switch. Now say that fast three times. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're gonna get doing. First, we're going to start with unboxing the Flex Mini, and trust me, it couldn't be any easier. Then we're going to talk about setting it up, and then just to throw in a little bit of variation, we're going to talk about setting up a mirrored port. Now, this is something that will prove useful at some point when you need to do a little bit of network detective work, but we'll get to that shortly. Let's get started. Now, this is one switch I think you're going to be interested in, because I don't know about you, but invariably I get into the situation where I'm just need one or two more ports and I really don't want to go put a bigger switch in. And even worse than that is the challenge of where am I going to plug in yet another wall wart? I'm sorry, that's vernacular for another transformer in the wall. And trust me, there's going to be a limit of what you can handle. This is Ubiquiti Switch Mini or Flex Mini. The interesting thing with this is that it doesn't have to have a power supply. Now you see there in the back, it's got a USB-C port, but you have the ability on that port that says PoE in to be able to feed it from a switch that's PoE. So here's, here's what we're gonna be able to do. Say you have a, your main switch in the house or office, wherever this happens to be, is a PoE switch. That's great. Now it's going to have to be the right kind, but there's, you'll, you'll see this when you get into the switch. You'll take a PoE port, you'll plug it into that port on the Flex Mini, and then it will come up and then you can get it registered. Let's switch over and then we can go on to getting the next step ready. So this is the box you're going to see it come in very, uh, tight little box they didn't waste any time or any space so we'll pull that out and just like you see on on the video got the one poe import now it's important to note on these that none of these four ports will pass poe that becomes a logistical nightmare so it's it's easier that it doesn't plus they wouldn't be able to make it this small so you have the option of either feeding it from a PoE switch. And for those of you who watch some of my other episodes, you'll know I've, I've got some of the other Ubiquiti. So it's pretty much gonna be a good thing and it's gonna work. If that's not an option for you, then you do have the USB-C port here and back. And we will get this unboxed. And bless their little hearts. They've got a cable and it's already attached. So you don't have to worry about it sliding out because that's probably the, the number one gripe that I have with some of the devices is they send you a little transformer, then a cable plugs in. Well, what happens if this is behind a dresser or a piece of furniture and the cable comes out? You're not necessarily going to realize that right away. So kudos Ubiquiti for, for getting this done. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to plug in an ethernet cable that I've run. And this is one that I really didn't expect to work. And let me reach down here and this will be, let me, okay, here we go. <laughs> cable right here. Now this is a flat cable. And I, the one I ordered that way, I've started using more of these, but this is one that, you know, you gotta be careful how it's treated because at some point it will have a problem, but it, it passed PUE just fine in my, in my initial testing. So we've got it right here. We'll plug that in. We should get, okay, so it sees PoE coming off that. So now it's just a matter of our going into the management page and we should see another 
device coming up here in just a second. We'll switch over here to the uh, devices page. And it may take it just a little bit to get acknowledged, but it did uh, come up right away. So that's that's always a uh, a good thing. We ah, there we go. I just didn't wait. I didn't wait long enough. Story of my life. Now, if you're not familiar with the Ubiquity, this is one that is very unique. It it's a it's a dumb switch and it's a smart switch. I need to explain that one. You've seen me already switch over here to a management page. I've already got, basically it's a Raspberry Pi running in the background that has the management engine for this ready to go. So this, it helps you, gives you a central place to manage it. You don't have to worry about if you know anybody who's got a background in IT, if that's not where your skills are, you may hear them cuss and fuss about console cables and all that. With the Ubiquity line, it's a central management engine. Now, there's a little more work to setting that engine up initially, but that's nothing that you won't be able to accomplish because I've already got a video that shows that one. It's just a matter of getting it posted over here. So let's go ahead and switch back. And now you can see it's already identified it. And if you're not used to working with this kind of thing, that's the MAC address of the switch. And that helps you uniquely identify it on the network. So we'll double click that or single click as the case may be. And you see where it says adopt. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. And actually you can't see that when my ugly mug is up there. So we'll click on adopt. And what the adoption process is going to do is it's going to go through a process of getting it associated with your Ubiquity account and then going through and making sure that the latest code is on there. And this just shipped. So it's, I think they're getting these things out the door as fast as they can. So that's not really going to be a problem in our case. And you see, it's already got it adopted. And is there, okay, there's actually a firmware update here. So we need to, let's go. It's always good with the ubiquities when you first get one to go through and get the upgrade process done. So we'll click on confirm. Now, if you've got anything plugged into this, again, this is for those that are not doing IT or networks as part of their day job, or you're not used to using it, there will be a slight disruption at a couple of parts during the process. And that's where it's first got to download the code. And as you can see right now, I'll we'll get my picture turned off here. You can see it says updating, downloading. So it's actually doing two things about the same time. It's going downloading the latest code, then once it does that, and this process will take, well, probably several minutes. Uh, don't plan on it being just a, a quick flash in the pan situation because that's it is going to depend to a degree on your internet speed, what else you've got going on with the network. This is something that you may find you'll do periodically, and that periodically could be once a quarter, once every six months, it just depends on when Ubiquity finds a problem or wants to add a new feature. So this is, you know, once it gets through the process here and it, it says, and it goes to, it'll go to updating right now, which is what it's doing. And then it will shift over to probably provisioning for just, you know, probably 30 seconds to a minute. And that's when it's digesting what's going on and rebooting. And it may tell us, depending on the code, that it is uh, already going through a, a reboot process. They don't always tell you that, but that's where you need to plan on an outage or things not working right for, for just a bit. So that's, you know, that's just the nature of things when you, when you get into this kind of functionality. So it is going into provisioning right now. It just switched over to that. And it's got the latest code. So really, you're, you're set ready to go at this point. So it is usable at a base level. Now, if we, we, we've still got it clicked here. So there's things you can look at the uplink. It's got full duplex gig, which on the cable I've got, um, I'm, I'm impressed that it's doing that. There's no, nothing it's connected to at this point. And there's no clients connected. You can see really from the ubiquity side of things, they do a good job at telling you 
what is there and there this is where you can really delve into things and it's nothing that you can't fix now this is where you get into doing what we call the port mirroring now this is going to take everything that is coming in to the switch on both inbound and outbound and this is where you really this is not something you want to do day one but this is one of the things that the ubiquity flex switch has the real potential to be a a temporary poor man's ethernet tap so this is something that again it's something you can use to get more skills and get things up and running so it's just a matter of we click on port mirroring and then you say which port that you want it to mirror now obviously you can't mirror yourself but for say for example you want to use something like uh, Wireshark or some sort of other network uh, packet capturing utility and we want to watch everything that's coming into this switch so at that point we would go to the uh, the link uh, the the inbound connection to the switch is let me get back here okay so it's now so we would see everything coming in there and so if you had another device it would let you basically kind of insert yourself into the middle of the conversation but that really is that's not something that you'll want to worry about doing right away, but it's interesting for a $29 switch that it has that option. So it's really worthwhile. Uh, you, you can't go wrong, especially for a, something where you need connectivity and at an endpoint somewhere in your house or a small office, and you really don't want to have to worry about, you know, yet another AC transformer. So it's, it really is, I think, worthwhile looking at. Definitely, it's going to be easy to get a hold of. The challenge I've seen, the best price i found, and you always look, as I went directly to Ubiquity, they do have a different deals going on where if you buy like two or three, that you have an option there to save a little bit. Shipping is not that bad. I had it within uh, two days, which surprised me as I was not uh, expecting it anywhere near that quick so it's really something that is very useful to have if you need one more port example i'm already looking at this where i've got my main eight port switch which you see here on the management page i've already got that pretty much maxed out well now i do sacrifice one port connecting this switch to this one but then i end up gaining not only one port to replace the one I lost for the connection between the two, but then I've got three more ports. So really it becomes a win-win for all concerned. When you need just one or two more, or you've got friends coming over and you're doing uh, some sort of land gaming party, this really is, it's worth an option considering depending on the uh, level of sophistication of the game or what you're going to be doing with those that are coming over. So really this is one, it's well worth the money. And it's you get network management. It's it's a smart switch. It has you can control things that you wouldn't expect to be able to do for a twenty nine dollar switch. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you're watching now or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.